What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because in today's video I'm bringing you guys a new take on how to play fish and how to play sharks in today's format. Now a new card number four stealth Kragen just came out and this is specifically Kragen control. You guys will see why in the deck profile but if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content. Now in today's deck profile I'm going to be showing you guys the newest way to be able to play sharks, play water, play fish, and still be competitively viable. Yes, this is a competitively viable build. If you guys want to go to a locals, want to go to an event, you guys can take this. It's a lot of fun. And again, some of the card choices that you guys will see in this deck profile are chosen specifically so that you can play against the meta, be able to compete and go to these events and, and succeed and do well, right? So thank you guys all for watching. I really hope you guys do enjoy. And that's really all I got to say. So with that, on to the video. Okay, so to get things started off here, I do want to say that I play my build, as you guys can see, maybe a little bit differently than a lot of people like to play their builds. And I'll explain it when I get into it, but it's really, really important because I've played this deck a lot and I played against this deck a lot and I've seen them fold to like one or two cards and I never want that to happen. I want this to be as competitively viable as possible, essentially. So uh, yeah, I'll get into that when I get into that and I'll explain my choices, but for the monsters themselves, this is kind of pretty standard because you are playing Triple Buzzsaw Shark, of course, your best starter. You're playing Triple Lantern Shark. It's a really good starter as well, but it's really good to special summon off of your Buzzsaw Shark. Then you have a Silent Angler as well as a Silent Sea Nettle. Now you have to keep in mind, if you guys are new to this deck, Silent Angler locks you out from special summoning from your hand after you use his effect. So if you guys do open a Silent Angler and you open a Silent Sea Nettle or you open like an Ixies Remora, for example, then you do want to use these before you use your Silent Angler because once you use your Silent Angler, you can't special summon from your hand any longer, okay? So that's just something to keep in mind um, for anyone who's new to the deck, for anyone who's learning the deck or playing the deck for the first time. You don't want to lock yourself out essentially after using your Silent Angler, right? So that's three of. Then you have another three of, which is Silent Sea Nettle. Sea Nettle is really good because one, of course, an extender, it's a special summon for you. But on top of that, when it's in the graveyard, you can target up to three of your water monsters in your graveyard and then shuffle them back into your deck which is really good because it helps you resource so that's why you're playing three silent sea nettle this card's really really good three ixies remora one of your best extenders this card allows for some crazy crazy plays now i'm not trying to say that three card combos are always the best because you don't want to rely on drawing three cards most of this deck is one one and a half of two card combos but ixies remora is that third card that if you draw it with like a buzzsaw shark with a lantern shark or a buzzsaw shark plus a sea nettle you just go off like your combo can go off with this right so uh yeah that's why you're playing triple ixies remora this card is insanely strong then triple butuniful princess this card's really good really susceptible to hand traps though but this card of course is really good because it's essentially a sixth uh, like a fourth five fifth and sixth copy of any card in your deck essentially right so that's why you want to be playing this i guess it's not the silent sea nettle because this is an aqua but all your fish monsters right so it's it's technically extra copies of any fish monster then you're playing two ash and one veiler now this is a part that i want to explain these ratios might seem a little weird but trust me there's there's a reason why i'm playing these ratios and that's pretty much cross out actually i'm going to talk about cross out right now since we're already on it so i'm playing triple cross out as well as one call by the grave so the reason i'm playing two ash and one veiler and then i guess triple imperm here as well i'll put these here because technically imperm is a hand trap so i'll put imperm with the hand traps here so the reason i'm playing these and this ratio is because I've seen this deck when, in my experience with playing it and playing against it, where it's like, if you summon a Beautiful Princess and you don't have an extender in your hand, even if you actually have, most of your extenders with Beautiful Princess don't even work because um, if you summon this and it gets ashed, your Silent Sea Angler, you don't have a water monster for it. You don't have a water monster for your Silent Sea Nettle, okay? You're probably not going to have a water monster in your graveyard for your White Mirror. So this card essentially is very susceptible to losing to a lot of hand traps and you just essentially straight up lose to this so because of that i do want to play a very like i'm not losing to any hand trap you play dot deck if that makes sense that's why ash is really important as, as a two of because even if i draw one of them it's okay because cross out but then you have stuff like veiler because a lot of people like to veiler your buzzsaw shark a lot of people like to imperm your buzzsaw shark so you're playing that you're playing triple cross out as well as the one called by the grave i know it seems excessive but you really cannot afford to lose. You would rather brick with a cross out in hand or quote unquote brick with a cross out in hand than lose to a single Ash Blossom on your normal summon, right? So that's very important. And in my opinion, from a lot of the testing, a lot of the experience I have with this deck, if I just straight up summon a, the, the, the tuna and this gets Ashed, I, I just sit there. I, do, I don't do anything, right? Like maybe if I open my back row, then I just set a couple back row, but it's, it's not worth it at that point, right? So that's why I'm really maxing out on this because I do not want to lose to hand traps. Now for anyone who's saying like, 
What about Nibiru? First of all, if you're playing the Kragging Control, which was what this deck is essentially, you're not going to be losing to Nibiru, but because you're pretty much going to be sitting with Kragin and a bunch of back row, that's, that's the main goal of this deck. So you're not going to be losing to Nibiru. But on top of that, if you see a situation where you can just extend your plays like crazy, then you'll probably be making Toad before your fifth summon anyways. If you guys haven't watched my Shark combo video from, I think I did it like a month or two months ago, it's essentially the same combo deck. It's, instead of it being a Kragin Control, it just shows you what kind of combos you guys can do with Sharks and Fish. And you you can put up toad as your fourth summon so putting up toad as your fourth summon means that you're nibiru proof anyways right so you're not going to lose something like the mirror in this deck so that's why i wanted to show you guys that you really don't want to lose to a single hand trap sometimes a single hand trap is enough especially with a deck like this where it's kind of rogue uh yeah you don't want to lose to a single hand trap that's why you're maxing out on these then we're playing one instant fusion just an extender for you double white mirror i didn't want to play triple one it's because it's a once per turn two it actually does nothing for you if you don't get a setup for it so that's why i'm only playing two of it but this card is really really good because Yes, it monster reborns from your graveyard, but the really cool thing about this effect is it sets you up effectively for your next turn. Because if you monster reborn something like your Buzzsaw Shark, then you can add another Buzzsaw Shark from your deck to your hand and it'll set you up for your next turn. So that's why I really like White Mirror too. I think it's a really, really good card. And then we're playing the trap cards that pretty much control and, and help you stop your opponent from making boards. And that is triple goes and match, which is really important. If anyone who doesn't know this deck, I'll get into it when I get into Kragan, but goes and match is really important in this deck. Then you have triple solemn strike and triple solemn judgment. So you don't lose to anything. So essentially the judgment is kind of like, you're not breaking my board. The strike is like, you're not making a board and goes in is also kind of like, you're not making a board. Goes in and strike are also really, really powerful going second because essentially like if you just go second and your opponent puts up a bunch of like negates or whatever, you can set the goes in, set the strike. Then when you flip your goes in on your opponent, turn they'll be like okay i'm gonna try to negate the goes in and then you strike it and then you're in a safe position from there so that's why uh strike goes in is really good going first but it's also really good going second okay so that's it for the main deck it's a 40 card main deck and i really want to emphasize like you do not want to lose to hand traps so that's why we're playing triple cross out as well as the one call by the grave now i will say if you guys don't have your hands on cross out or you think triple cross out is a little bit excessive you can cut one cross out out maybe put another hand trap in maybe put another extender in but i'm really maxing out on this because i do not want to lose i don't want to ever be in a situation where i'm like Normal summon tuna, ash, pass. Like I don't want to be in that situation, right? Uh, so yeah, that's why I'm maxing out on this. But this is a 40 card in the main deck. Then moving on to the extra deck, we are playing one rare fish, of course, with the instant fusion. Then we're playing one stealth Kragan. Kragan and Gozen match is pretty much the god combo for this deck. And I'm going to explain why real quick. So if anyone who doesn't know, Kragan has an effect where essentially all monsters on the field, all face up monsters on the field become water. Okay, now that's really important. Because a lot of decks are not playing water monsters in their hand. They're not playing water monsters in the extra deck for the most part. So if you set up Kragan plus like a Gozen match, your opponent normal summons a monster. They won't be able to summon any more monsters from their deck or their hand. Unless for some reason you're playing the mirror match, which the mirror match wouldn't care. But other than the mirror match, uh, yeah, other decks are not going to be able to play through it. It's going to be very, very difficult. They have to find a way to negate the Kragan first. Otherwise, it's like they still have to play through a Gozen match. And a lot of decks aren't playing one attributes in their deck anyways, right? So that's why Kragan plus Gozen match is really, really strong. And that's why this deck is essentially called Kragan Control. Because literally sitting on a Kragan plus a Gozen match, your opponent is going to find a very hard time playing through it, right? Plus, Kragan is really strong because it has its own protection effect, or not necessarily protection, but it's also own floating effect, I should say, where essentially if this card is destroyed, you can special summon stealth Kragan spawns from your extra deck up to the number of materials this card had. Most of the time, it's going to have two materials on it anyways, so essentially you're going to be summoning two Kragan spawns, which is why we're playing two here. Now, I will say that stealth Kragan also has a really cool effect where once per turn, you can destroy a water monster in the field, and because it makes all your opponent's monsters water, you can pretty much pop a monster your opponent controls, is what the effect says, and on top of that, you don't have to detach to do that so because you don't have to detach to do that it's always going to have the two materials under it which means your kragan spawns you're always going to be able to summon two so your kragan spawn also has this really cool effect where okay now your stealth kragan floats into these your stealth kragan will also attach a material onto this card okay so when that happens essentially when this card is destroyed you can summon a stealth kragan from your graveyard up to the number of materials it has and it's going to have one material from your stealth kragan so then you're going to summon your stealth kragan back and then all your opponent's monsters are going to water again that's really important because the other Kragan spawn has an effect where once per turn during the main phase, and it's a quick effect, you pop a water monster your opponent controls. So now you're getting two pops. 
Like that's why this this deck is really a controlly deck, and that's why essentially it's called Kraken Control. And then next for the extra deck, you're playing three Bahamut Shark, three Toad. I do like to max out on three and three because there is a combo where you can make triple Toad. It doesn't come up too often, but there is a combo where you can make triple Toad and F zero. So that's why I'm playing three and three. You're playing one Dweller. Dweller works super super well in this deck. One Vespa Knight. This card is really important for the combo. That's why you're just playing the one. One F zero. One F zero. Utopic Draco Future, as well as one Zeus. All Ixie, it's, a, it's an Ixie's base deck. So uh, yeah, Zeus is really important here. And then F zero Draco Future is really really powerful because you can make this in one of your combos. You can make this a lot of the time actually, but in one of the combos you literally end on F zero plus Triple Toad, which is insanely insanely powerful. So that's it for the deck. Really like this deck is really really cool. I know I kind of went in depth with how to play this deck, but I think it's really important to know that like sitting on Stealth Kragen with a Gozen and like a Strike or a goes in and a judgment or a goes in and imperm like you're in such a good spot so uh yeah that's why this deck is really really fun it's really really different from your basic generic like shark decks it's, it's a different take on it but i think it's a really cool take and i think it's a really fun deck to play so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy now if you guys have any suggestions any opinions any thoughts let me know in the comment section down below now i will say i know that a lot of the builds you guys might see online are not maxing out on the cross out with the called by the grave however in this build i really wanted to make it so that when you go to an event you're not going to lose to a single hand trap you're not going to lose to a single disruption right and that's pretty much this deck's biggest weakness and that's what this build pretty much aims to not do it aims to not lose against that if that makes sense right but i hope you guys did enjoy if you guys did make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and with that spanko signing out peace